Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's the Ungodly Geeks. Hooray! I'm Joe. I'm Luke. And today we are bringing you another podcast episode, because sometimes we do that thing. Um, if you're paying attention at all, you're watching on YouTube or something, you can see that uh, I currently have Destiny 2 pulled up. Luke and I are going to sit here and play it while we bullshit about uh, various things. Because reasons. Yeah, yeah, we were already in the game when we were talking. We were like, you know what, fuck it, let's just play. Um, so, yeah. So what you basically get to see is um, me being terrible at Destiny 2. This, <laughs> it happens, right? Um, but we're going to start off, like we do, with our news yeah. of the stupid. Um, do you want to start with the uh, trial by sword? Because that's amazing. I think so. Yeah, yeah. that's my favorite thing ever. <laughs> so like, <laughs> it, it really is incredible. Um, so guys, there's a Kansas man who is requesting a trial by combat with swords to settle a custody battle with his ex-wife, and it's just, <laughs> it's just why, you know, it's just why. Um, Kansas man is an Iowa judge to let him engage in a sword fight with his ex-wife and her attorney, so he can rend their souls from their bodies. <laughs> if it wasn't cringy enough already oh it gets even worse David Ostrom 40 of Paula, Kansas said in the January 3rd court filing that his former wife Bridget Ostrom 38 of Harlan, Iowa and her attorney Matthew Husband had quote destroyed him legally the Ostroms have been embroiled in dispute over custody and visitation issues and property tax payments <laughs> this is this is just this is just so stupid I so they yeah. beat me in court I will beat them in the field of combat. He asked the judge for 12 weeks time to procure J Japanese samurai swords, a.k.a. katanas, because of course <laughs> he's going to look for katanas as if this shit isn't like cringy enough. I, I, why? How did this dude, like this dude's a closet neck beard and I love it. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I'd say he's pretty far out of the closet on that. Well, now he is. <laughs> like, but it's not like he could have gotten um, any sort of. Uh, he couldn't have gotten a woman if his neck beardness was showing. Let's be honest here. Like, it, it's just, it's just incredible to me. You know, like, I love it. I, I absolutely love, and I wish I could have been there in the courtroom to have the judge be like. So it says here you want a trial by combat with swords, Your Honor. Uh, with, with what? With swords? Uh, okay. With a trial by combat with swords, uh, and you want how many weeks to procure katanas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. It's just. It's just so many levels of what the fuckness. Uh, it's just. Oh my God. I, I can't, I don't know what to say. You know, like, I, I just, I don't know what to say. Like I said, I, I love it. I just imagine that, in the quote of, that he wants to rend their souls because they defeated him legally, like. No, 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 no. They didn't defeat him. They destroyed him. Like, those are his exact words. It's like, what? They're better at court than I am, so now I can fight them. They're smarter than me, so I want to beat them up with swords. <laughs> like, yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know, man. It's, it's incredible. Uh, so let's move on to our next story. There were six tourists who were um, arrested. In... Oh, but the final part, of course, that he was allowed to have his trial by combat with swords. And, was and, he? And did slay them both. No, of course I don't fucking know. <laughs> Like, was he? Let's find out, Luke. We need no. to give the closure, Joe. The closure. There is no closure because this is retarded. No one deserves to like. He <laughs> does not deserve. Not entertain this for a second in court. Yeah, no. This is this is this is the dumbest thing ever. This is a um, mockery of our system of government. <laughs> I mean, our government is a mockery of our government. It's fine. Um, but anyway, moving on, there were some tourists who were arrested in Peru in um, the Machu Picchu ruins and cultural sites and stuff for uh, taking a shit in one of them. They had to take a shot? Yeah, no, they, they took they took a poop. 
What I love is the way it's described that they were, uh, uh, what was it, that they, they had found feces and then went and found these people and arrested them. Like, this your shit. Pretty sure this is your shit. This looks like not anybody shit. else around here to have shit in the fucking behind the altar. Like nobody else <laughs> would do this. So, uh, thankfully, if anyone is wondering, there were not any Americans involved. So that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> that, that makes me feel like a little bit better because we are surrounded by the stupid in this country. And yeah. whenever we go to other countries, like there's a reason why the countries hate us. You know? They typically don't like us, but at least for Americans, it's because of like arrogance and uh, yeah, yeah. like stupidity or something. Like it's how usually proud not we are because be an American. Ignorant. Yeah, it's usually not because an American like takes a shit on the Mona Lisa or something. <laughs> they might like go up and be like, "Oh, well, I can touch it." No, you can't. But but as I can, yeah. Up, like, oh, you died. <laughs> yeah, the window was my color scheme to Windows Basic. Oh. God damn it. I, have not I don't know why. <laughs> because fuck you. Accident. Pretty much. Oh, I'm the last Guardian standing. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> oh god. But, <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm just... <laughs> I... I don't know why people that go on vacations can't just respect the place they're at. Yeah, no, like, come on, guys. What What is wrong with you? Um, yeah. Oh, another thing that I want to touch on before we hit our last story. Uh, another story that I just remembered that I had. Um, mm -hmm. There was a vulnerability that was recently disclosed in Windows 10. Yes. That a researcher used... To rickroll the NSA. I I heard about that. I well, I saw the article title because of course I did. Um, uh, I'm not going to go over the exploit because it, I mean, it really, I really don't like need to. But yeah. yeah, they basically used the exploit, got into the NSA servers, and threw a YouTube video of Rick Ashley is never going <laughs> to well, give you up right on the homepage. <laughs> God, that's great. It is amazing. Oh, God. I'm gonna die. Yep, I died. Um, I, I love that. I'm really glad that that happened and that they got hit with that because that is the greatest thing ever. Um, it's It couldn't happen to a nicer bunch of people. Yeah, no. Absolutely. We've probably been looking for a backdoor like that into uh, Windows 10 for a while. <laughs> and then it got used against them, which is just, yeah. like I said, just amazing. All right, so let next door uh, he drops out, in a uh, drops in Louisville, Kentucky, because why not? Um, a young woman, young girl, fifteen years old, freshman at a uh, private school called White uh, Whitefield Academy, Whitefield Academy rather was expelled for lifestyle violations. All right, so that word alone just makes yeah, me angry. Yeah, I was angry. just going to say, what the fuck... Is a lifestyle does violation, mean, and what does that have to do with going to your shitty school? Machine. Your high school? Uh, yes, yeah, she's, she's a freshman. Uh, fucking freshman. Yeah. <sighs> like, she's 15, and... She was expelled for a lifestyle violation. Apparently, there, there have been repeated lifestyle violations. Now, her lifestyle violation was, and I can't believe I have, I'm saying this, having a rainbow cake and posing with rainbow shirts. She just likes rainbows, man. Like... Having a rainbow cake and posing with rainbow shirts. Yeah, like, that's, that's what, it that's just... what her violation is. And it's like, really? Like, it's just so much what the fuck. It, and we know probably where this is coming from. Oh, or absolutely. 90, it, it, like 100% it's, it's where this is coming from is, hom is uh, homophobia. Yeah, no, it's, it's a private school 
They yeah. don't like people wearing rainbows and having rainbow cakes. So they're basically accusing this young woman of being gay like it's a fucking crime. Plot twist, it's not a crime. There's nothing wrong with it. It's it's a life. So, also, posing with a rainbow cake, like, in her own time at home? Yeah, no, like, like her mom posted a picture on Facebook yeah, no, of her, it's... like, with a rainbow cake. Like, that. that's it. That's the story. And they I, expelled her. Does it say what kind of private school it is, if it's a Christian school or anything like that? Um, at this exact moment, I can't no, check, obviously. Yeah. But yes, um, I do believe it does. Uh, let's see here. Um, this is clearly some kind of trap. Let me see here. Whitefield Academy. Hmm. I can't say if it does in this story or not, in this story or not. Uh, okay. But it's a private school. It's a private school, but which it, means, and it's in Kentucky. Yeah. Which means it's likely, you know. It's, it's right in the by that Bible Belt. Yeah. So you know it's probably Catholic or Christian or whatever. It's dumb either way. Like, come on, yeah. man. You're gonna sit there and expel a young woman because she likes. The, the rainbow, which, um, and like, aside from the LGBTQ uh, representation, like rainbow is just a color. Yeah, she she likes rainbow. She's she's a young girl who flame. likes the way the rainbow looks. <laughs> it it's it's just a fucking reflection of light. It's not it's not out to get you. It's not yeah like like it's 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 a thing that exists in nature like. Yeah, I don't understand it's a natural that. occurrence, but no, it's uh, and that that the thing that really really bugs me the hell out of me is again this isn't like she came to school parading around, uh, fucking some kind of like rainbow. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's not like she was vagina uh, cake. Yeah, that, like, no. with shooting rainbows or something that sometimes people like to accuse. Uh, like the, the the gay people that wanted a cake for their wedding, yeah. they're like, oh, well, they were gonna get giant dicks and everything all up. No, they they wanted a wedding cake. They they and the weren't they weren't doing that at to all. Make them a cake yeah. because it was for a gay wedding. No, which, not because it was. A which might as well be called a wedding at this point. In. Yeah, because it was a same sex wedding. I mean, that kind of. I mean, but yeah, but the, it, it, ultimately just, they just wanted was a, a wedding fucking cake. Home. Yeah. It was with her mo it's just a fucking rainbow shirt. It was no, just a no, fucking you cake can't with rainbow be posing on it. with that on. How what kind of fucking Oh, oh. my god. I'm having the network issues. The totalitarianness of that story just makes my fucking blood boil. I got like, where I got, do they goddamn get off. Luke, I got kicked from the Destiny servers. <sighs> Yay! I'm glad she's issues. expelled from that school. That school's not going to teach her anything any human being would need to learn. Yeah, no, it's um, it's complete bullshit. Like, it's just it's just terrible. And I'm glad that like she's enrolled in public school now, which you know, that's whatever. But yeah, no, she's she's uh, <laughs> she's in a better place. So that was it for news of the stupid. Just you know, just a few really dumb, perhaps frustrating stories that we wanted to go over. Um, so yeah, let's move on to other things. Oh, did I get kicked from the uh, network completely? Am I completely off the internet? I think I am, guys. Which is fun because we're in the middle of recording, and uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Huh. Well, this is fun. So I'm wondering if either... My VPN, because I always have VPN on, is down. Yep. All right. Let's see here. 
Uh, disconnect and let's see here. This is this is great. <laughs> this is so great. Huh. There we go. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Yeah, um, I think my VPN just, like, the server I was connected to just shed, shed on itself. So I, I've just turned it off for right now. There's nothing that I'm doing that I want to keep hidden from my, my ISP anyway. I'm just playing video games and uh, recording a podcast. Yeah. So that's, that's fun. Luckily, I realized it and was able to, I don't know, let's just keep going. I'm not going to okay. cut that out. You guys are just going to get that. It's just going to be <laughs> whatever. It. You're just going to get You're me You're going to have some technical fucking difficulties. Because, you know, that's like, that's our calling card at this point. Like, yeah. we, we can't do anything without technical difficulties. So I feel like a douche, though, man, because we, I mean, we were at the end, though. We defeated the thing. It's fine. I just don't get any treasure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you didn't? Uh, that sucks. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we killed it, and then uh, it, it popped up, and then, like, you didn't respond to me from it there, and then it popped up and said, a player has left your fire team. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, shit happened. Uh, I had failures. The session yeah. I was in no was no longer available. Like at least, all right. So that's one thing I got to give Destiny credit for. Like, it at least tried to reconnect me to the session that I was in last mm-hmm. when I lost connection. Yeah, I'm just glad that wasn't in the middle of like a PvP online competitive mode because that would have been you know would have been a mark against my imperfect record. Yeah. It's always frustrating when it happens in, uh, in matches like that. Yeah. It's, a, it's always frustrating when it happens in matches like that, and it's not your fault, it's their fault. As in yeah. Bungie's or Steam's or whatever. Because you still get oh, dinged for it. Yeah. I swear I didn't disconnect. <laughs> I didn't hit the uh, reset button on my router. <laughs> I did unplug the power from my router. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Basically, I, we we yeah we rancid on that enough. Just fucking. Yeah. Just, uh, I think the last thing I said. I don't know if it picked up. Probably was. Uh, it, I'm glad she's expelled from that school because yeah, she's no, not going to learn anything useful yeah. there anyway. Yeah, I picked that up, and you know, okay. I made the joke that she's in a better place. <laughs> yeah, she's probably going to find it. Hopefully, find a better school. Not that our public school system is worth a damn anyway, but maybe... maybe I don't know. I mean, it's like... Maybe maybe it's a little bit better down in her specific area. I don't know. Like, we seem to have pockets of really good public schools in weird places. So I don't know. It's all... Yeah, it's all dependent on how much fun stuff like that. Yeah. <clears throat> Which, if she was being sent to a private school... You know, 50-50. Maybe, maybe some of the public schools are good in that area, or she's at the private school because they're shit. Yeah. There's yeah. A giant high oh, good. We get to fight uh, Zol again. It's a high worm god. The giant worm! This is literally it's like... Oh, hello, worm! I don't know. Well, the 5,000 <laughs> times. <laughs> I was going to say, in the last week, this is the fourth time I fought him. Help. Yeah. Um, and, like, one of those times I soloed him on Heroic, so it's like... Mm-hmm. That being said, I, I don't want is. anybody to think I'm actually good at this game. He was just really easy. Yeah, it's one of the easier strike bosses. But yeah, so... Alright, so we got we got things to talk about. We, we moved on from yeah. this is stupid. Um, so, oh, okay. we're going to talk about... Um, God damn it, that's stupid. We're going to talk about... Uh, the Fire Emblem reveal. Yes. So, um, you know, Three Houses is getting some new story DLC, which is kind of cool. Uh, I'm kind of excited for that. Um, it's, basically, uh, it's a pretty badass game, so yeah. As um, The story this time is basically talking about... It, it, it's concentrating on a group of... I don't know if they're students or whatnot. I didn't exactly 
read up to on it too deeply, but uh, apparently it's like there there were a group of of students or people underneath the Garrick Mock Monastery, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> underneath the monastery. Yeah, because um, the students under the stairs. Basically, yes. Man, this dude takes on some damage. I got to revive our rando. One guy right off the bat. Um, anyway, so it's gonna focus on them. I believe it's called Cindered Houses or Cindered Ashes, which is kind of kind of a cool title. Um, is there any word? Are you still playing? Um, oh, yeah, still playing by left. You are okay. Um, <laughs> one day so, he's going downstairs and just like, hey, what is what, what's up with these cages? Why do we have kids in cages? <laughs> We're not the United States. What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> They're um, immigrants. So get away, Byleth. They will give you diseases and possibly rape just... you. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fucking. God. And drug dealers. Some of them, I assume, are good people, but we can't take that risk. I need a question. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, that, that's kind of neat. Uh, but that ties in with the next part of this. Uh, they announced the... Um, the Next DLC fighter for the Fighters Pass 1 for Smash Bros. Ultimate. And it's Byleth. Yes. Um, more Fire Emblem. More Fire Emblem. More! So now there are eight characters in Fire Emblem. Or Fire Emblem characters, rather, in Smash. Mm-hmm. And all of them have swords. Three of them have the same sword. I, I, I don't actually have a strong opinion either way about this. Like, I'm just kind of meh on the whole thing. But, I mean, it does look actually legitimately interesting. After I sit yeah. there, like, like I stopped and sat and watched the actual reveal. Um, she's, like, seems like it's going to be a little bit different from the other fighters, and I kind of like it. That's good, because when I, when I hear this story, and they're like, oh, Byleth, another Fire Emblem, my, immediately my first thought is, because the 40 that we already had wasn't a, yeah um, it's like it's not, not enough exactly yeah but um, the fire emblem character the new one that came with this game from the games that came out before um three houses yeah that character is vastly different than the older smash fire emblem characters yeah so if they're doing that with Byleth and she plays at least plays differently, yeah. even as a character with a sword, then I'm in. Yeah, no, that was, um, that's my biggest problem with those Fire Emblem characters, like Roy, Marth, um, Lucina, uh, the other one. Yeah, well, not Lucina. Uh, Roy, Marth, and who's the other guy? From I mean, the old Crom. Crom. Yeah, they all okay. play almost exactly the same. Lucina plays like, exactly. Like, but Lucina plays exactly like Marth. She's literally a yes. Marth Echo fighter. That's right. So it's like, yeah. Was, uh, yeah. Um, Byleth though seems like a fusion of a couple different character archetypes we already have. Um, yeah. Like when they were showing off in the beginning, like the male version of the character just fighting normally, I I almost got like a Richter vibe, and it's kind of really cool. You know, like using the sword of the creator to like snatch somebody out of the air and slam them into the ground. Which, and, that does sound cool. Yeah, and, uh, and, and when they revealed the female uh, avatar kind of. using the other, right. like, right. hero weapons, mm-hmm. and, like, that, that was like, okay, this is actually legitimately cool. Ooh. Like, she, yeah, her, her so different, sma- like, they're different smash attacks, and I do say they, because they are two separate characters that are basically the same character. Um, like, they're using... Are, sorry, just different, the different skins, the way they do the other... Probably. Alien I'm going to guess, oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, like, their different smash attacks are going to be the different weapons, you know? Like, there's a smash attack where they pull out the big bow and fire it, and there's a smash attack where they smack them with the giant fucking axe. There's the one where they swipe up with the, the spear, and it's like, okay, this could actually legitimately be kind of cool. So does that look like um, the different uh, angles of Smash, or yeah. does that look like a different? They've switched weapons. Like um, um, I think it's more like just different directions for Smash okay. attacks. 
um, give you different, like, pulled out different weapons for, for the move. Like, forward smash, I think, does, you know, the, the axe, or maybe it's the B button, so it's a special smash. I'm not, I'm not 100% clear on that. Um, even though I did watch it, I didn't, I guess I didn't pay enough attention to actually be able to answer that. I don't well, know. and I mean, they're not exactly gonna, like... Yeah. Um, but it's not, like, like she still us. uses the Sword of the Creator. Like, that's still her primary weapon. But, um... Yeah, no, it, it's it's one of those things that, like, okay, this is legitimately really cool, and I'm kind of down for this. Shit, I don't have the other weapons I need. Um, so, yeah, no, I could, I could see it, like, I could see her being a new, like, the character being added, like, actually being legitimately kind of cool. Yeah, well, that's interesting. I'm glad. I'm glad, like I said, as long as it's different than most oh, of the other Fire Emblem characters. Sure. And even at this point where I don't expect the characters to be, like, vastly different, because I'm assuming <laughs> probably <laughs> a lot of these a lot of these new characters are going to be based on characters we have. Yeah. At least don't base it on a Fire Emblem character. Like, if it came out and it fought, like, Captain uh, Falcon or something, I'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm down for that, whatever. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it feels more like she's, like I said, she's a combination of multiple characters. Yeah, which um, is cool. Like, I feel like with the axe, she's going to hit really fucking hard, like a la Ganondorf for Captain Falcon. You know, with yeah. the spear, she's going to have reach and, and maybe not hit as hard, but, you know, be able to grab shit. Uh, like, her wielding the bow reminds me of Link pulling out and you know, hitting things with his arrows and shit. Um, yeah. You know, like, it's it's actually, like, I feel like, while it's not original, of course, I, I feel like it's legitimately, like, they made an effort to... It should be different. Yeah, differentiate Byleth from, you know, other Fire Emblem characters. Not just, like, That's... other Smash characters, but, like, kind of make her or him or they, whatever, however you want to look at it, you know, legitimately <laughs> different. Anna is bringing the neural net online. So I kind of like it. Um, at yeah. first, I didn't have any strong feelings. Now that I've like seen, actually stopped and watched the Smash reveal, I'm like, all right, this could be interesting. Like, I'm not super excited for another Fire Emblem character with a sword, um, but I could still legitimately get behind this. Yeah. But yeah, you know that was that was that was some Smash news. And Which, so, I mean, I, I, I'm always happy to see more characters, too, for Smash. Yeah. No matter, you know, what, what they are, really. Because it's Smash. I like fucking, I like that game. I need to pick it up and start playing it more. But I haven't really touched my Switch at all, to be honest. I play my Switch fairly often. Um, so it's, it's like, I just haven't been playing Smash. I've been playing, like, Super Metroid or something. Yeah. Yeah, I'm usually I'm just on my PC lately. Cause this game just controls my game. Time. It controls your life. <laughs> Takes my life. We make a pretty good team. Oh, uh, but yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, I'm like, like I said, I'm. Compl I was impartial in the beginning. Now I'm like, all right, I'm kind of on board with this. Like, this is legitimate. Yeah. Kind of cool. What the fuck's up with these crystals, and why can't we damage them? It's how you get Luna. You have to come in here with uh, the, the pre-Luna gun and then destroy like eight of them or something. It's the final uh, part of the quest. Oh, okay. But anyway, yeah, no, that's like, that was something I was sitting there thinking about. Like, yeah, okay. And I still want Doom Guy as a Smash Brothers game. Dude, Not he's on lie. the Nintendo system now. They have no excuse. <laughs> Give me Doom Guy. Give me Doom Guy or um, fucking... Uh, um, Wolfenstein. Um, BJ Blaxowicz. BJ Blaxowicz. Yeah. Blaxowicz. Yeah. So we got could Doom. Even do it we've like got old Doom school. Too. Yeah. Right. Like. Yeah. Give me. Give me the Doom. Give me the original Doom Marine or something. Doesn't have to be like the the Doom Slayer. Give mm -hmm. me the Doom. Yeah. But we sit there. We've got Doom now. We've got Doom Two. We've got Doom Three. We're gonna have Doom Sixty Four. We've got the new Doom, and we'll have Doom Eternal all on the Nintendo system. That's six Doom games. That is all the major Doom games. Also, I believe <laughs> we also have Final Doom on there now, because 
they uh, added watt support, custom watt support to to the games. So now you can download like final. You can download uh, TNT and uh, oh my god, the other one, uh, the Plutonium Project or whatever, and play those games. So it's like, huh? If you're on Android or PC and you have the new Doom ports, you can just drop Doom original vanilla compatible wads in your folder and play them. So on the on the Switch. On the Switch, yeah, but you can, yeah, you can down. They're, they're, uh, what they're doing is they're going through and, uh, you know, grabbing community wads, asking for permission, test, play testing them and stuff, making sure they're high quality, and then you're going to be able to download those to your Switch or your Xbox or whatever and play them. And you can already do that with Sigil, which was John Romero's official, unofficial uh, fifth expansion to the original Doom. Um, yeah. You can do that, like I said, with the TNT Evolution, which and uh, the Plutonium Project, with those two, uh, those two uh, wads made up Final Doom. So it's like, that's really kind of fucking awesome. Hell yeah, it's pretty great. They give you fucking everything, basically. Yeah. No. Oh, so right now, <laughs> if you have the original Doom on your uh, Switch, that that Doom port that they released earlier this year you could play like three different doom games right off the bat just from that one that one five dollar purchase <laughs> so that's like kind of cool yeah so we need doom guy and smash i love that that'd be so great give us doom, doom guy and smash Slayer. <laughs> like he could fit in there just fine it would be okay like he punches, oh, uh, I, he kicks things, he stomps on their heads. It's fine. He has a move set. <laughs> He's a brawler character with some ranged attacks. Just fucking put him in there. They they've already kind of um, checked off one of the worst boxes possible by technically putting Sans in Smash. Yeah. I don't yeah. want. I just please don't put fucking Steve in Smash. Don't do it. If you're going to do it, the Give only accept- the only acceptable <laughs> way to do it is as a me costume, like they did with Sans. Sans, yeah. That that would be for me the only acceptable like way to do that. Um, <laughs> otherwise, t- no, go away. I hate you. <laughs> like that's legitimately how I feel. Don't want it. Yeah, do not. Yeah, do not. I do not want it. Oh man. So um did we talk about we talked about a little bit of Star Wars. Did we talk about Colin Trevorrow's Back out there. um script that apparently leaked? We have not. Oh, okay. So let's uh let's talk about that for a bit, buddy. I can work with that. Yeah. So um couple Star Wars news things that came out. Uh, I'd say this week. I think the Taika Waititi thing came out like yesterday or this morning. Right. Um, so the first good news is that Taika Waititi is apparently – has been, in quote-unquote, invited to work on a Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. Um, now, this is one of those unconfirmed, confirmed stories. Like the Hollywood sources that are generally really good about getting stories are saying that this is something that happened. Right. Whether or not Disney will ever admit to it, who knows? Uh, until like you know whether or not he does a movie, I guess. Um, well, yeah. But they've apparently approached Taika Waititi and asked him, "Hey, would you like to do a Star Wars movie?" Right. Since everything that happened, like pre and post, um, Rise of the Skywalker, has apparently gone up in flames. <laughs> the yeah. the fact that they Ryan Johnson was going to do his own trilogy, obviously not not happening anymore after the reception of um, um, wow. Last of the Jedi. Uh, the two fuck faces for that did Game of Thrones, they were supposed to be doing their own Star Wars trilogy or movie. Uh, that has been, there's been no word on that for a while. And I think uh, strong rumor has it that that's been canceled as well uh, and is not happening. And I want to say there's like one or two other ones that same thing, same deal. Movies were supposed to happen. Now you know they, they've been canceled or put on indefinite hold, right. or yeah, right, right. So as far as and I know after Solo, you know we've talked about that they immediately put the hold uh, uh, a permanent hold on 
any of the Star Wars stories movies because Solo didn't apparently didn't perform the way they wanted. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, it wasn't it wasn't a great performance. It wasn't terrible. It was just not up to their standards. Yeah. No. It did well. It didn't do well in theaters oh, uh, at, all. at all. It did not make Star Wars money. It I wasn't mean, like a complete loss. It wasn't a bomb, but it wasn't good. Right, right. I got you. It did not make its money, uh, I, I believe, anyway, because that's the movie that they had to re they refilmed like <laughs> half the movie. Is it Jesus? Yeah, after that's, that's pretty um, terrible. <laughs> after the director left, and, or the they they fired the directors, mm -hmm. um, and then had the, another person basically come in and refilm most of the movie. That's the one where, like. <clears throat> the actor playing Han Solo was like coming, going to Disney behind the director's back and like, Hey, they're turning this into a comedy. Are you sure that's what you wanted? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Disney asked to see the dailies and stuff. And then we're like, yeah, we're having a, te or a difference of opinion or whatever the fuck they use. Creative. Uh, when uh, the, the creative differences. Yeah. Creative and they differences. parted ways. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's just hopefully this – like I, I like Taika Waititi. I think he's a great storyteller. Yeah. Uh, no, I think I'm his like, humor is perfect. I'm completely down for it, yeah. I want him to do – and I, I'm hoping that they're smart enough, and I think they are. Um, and he's been involved with um, The Mandalorian, so I mm -hmm. think he understands yeah, he's, he's, he's kind written. of stories – He's written a couple episodes, I believe. I know he's directed a couple. He was even in an episode, so yeah, no. Um, well, he's in. Uh, he's the voice of uh, the IG droid. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of kind of cool. So yeah, I'm like I'm completely down with with Taika Waititi uh, doing a Star Wars flick. As I mean, yeah. he's a great director. He's a great writer. Like I think he could inject. Um, I, I think his brand of humor could work in Star Wars. Especially with some of what we've seen just in general. Honestly, um, I think, uh, like, you know, obviously he does whatever kind of movie he wants to do. Right. I think it would be awesome if he basically goes total space balls mm -hmm. and does, like, a comedy. Like, you have your, like, scruffy um, Han Solo type character. He's got his sidekick or whatever. And it's just them bumbling through fucking <laughs> space yes. and getting involved with shit. Like I'm 100% down for that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm completely wanting to see that. I'm, so I'm... please go. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the other news and that's good news to me. Oh, like absolutely. Yeah. No, um, fuck. Yeah. Give me, give me a Taika Waititi star Wars. It's, it's the other thing good. that the other thing that came out uh, is an interesting story. Um, apparently, and this and one of kind of like um, stories that comes out is a leak, and then someone denies it, and then now somewhere else there's evidence that it's true. Yeah. Um, there was a making Star Wars report mm -hmm. about uh, Ray's parents early in December. Um, that said Ray's, uh, Leia's servant was Ray's mother uh, in a version of Star Wars Episode Nine that was done by Colin Trevorrow, who was originally supposed to direct that movie. Right. Um, and then uh, recently it came out uh, on our Star Wars Leaks uh, Reddit uh, subreddit, which is known for when they have leaks, they tend to be real. They tend like, to be accurate. Um, yeah, yeah. The, uh, basically the ending of uh, Rise of Skywalker was up months beforehand on right. that on that subreddit. Oh, I'm kind of glad um, that uh, the Emperor. I'm kind of glad that I don't subscribe to that. I didn't even know it existed. You know. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't either. I uh, I when I heard about those, I did go look because you know I kind of expected trash from the movie and saw the leaks and was like oh no <laughs> <laughs> oh yes it's it's trash <laughs> um so the uh they come out now with what is apparently the script 
that Colin Trevorrow and uh, someone else, I can't remember, Jack Thorne, I think, mm-hmm. uh, was, uh, they were working on. Right. Um, and it's, at least on paper, granted, and I've read some of this and the big parts of this, um, the big differences between this and the movie we got, uh, on paper, it sounds like a pretty amazing movie. Right, right, um, right. Right off the bat, the name is better. The name is so Star Wars it hurts. It's it was supposed to be called Star Wars: Duel of the Fates. Um, you know, now again, that like you're I saying said, that, I think I remember hearing something about one of the movies being called Duels of the Fates. Yeah, I think this was a leak way early on that um, that then went away or maybe they announced it way back when he was still directing it and right. then took it away. I'm not sure. But the name is, like I said, it's, it's also the song from episode one. Right. Or not episode one. I think um, Duel of the Fates was Obi-Wan versus uh, uh, Anakin. I can't remember. About right. Yeah. It's either that I, or the Darth Maul fight. Either I, way, it, it's Star yeah. Wars as fuck. Right. I legitimately do not know. So I wasn't even going to say anything. Like I, I have yeah. no fucking idea. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember which. It's the title to the, one of those songs, though. Um, so one of the big things in this uh, is, it, it, like, so it straight up said, one, somebody quoted, I hope to God that Kelly Moran Trang doesn't read this script because she had a, such a much more massive role in this cut of the movie, in this version of the movie, than she did in J.J. Abrams. Because J.J. Abrams spent, like, uh, fucking half of his movie just unwriting all the things that happened in uh, The Last Jedi. Like, <laughs> yeah, all right. she's pushed to the side and ignored. She has like 11 seconds of screen time in his. Like, all the things we've talked about before, which I still find funny, didn't help make a good movie. I find them funny, and I, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think that it was exactly the worst idea ever because of the reception of some of those things. Right, but right. in... In this script, her story sounds way, way better. Um, it's It's been – apparently her and Finn were going to go off on a side mission again. However, the side mission sounds way fucking better than money is bad, rich people are bad, let's save the horsies. They were, <laughs> they were yeah. supposed to go and steal a – they go to steal a Star Destroyer. And then they're going to light a beacon on Coruscant, the right. beacon at the old Jedi temple. The right. whole goal of this movie is pretty much the thing that they kind of talked about in the, the last Jedi of we need to unite the galaxy against the first order. Right. But it's not, it's not a, well, we'll make the call. It's a legitimate, no, we're lighting, lighting the beacons of Gondor. We're rallying the people instead of just, well, maybe they'll show up. It, it it fucking makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not one of those. Hey, maybe like, hey, is everybody gonna show up? Like, yeah, they'll show up. Like, no, we know for yeah, a fact. yeah, no, they'll be here. Totally. Yeah, yeah we know Why? for a fact be, they're gonna be here because because the people are angry. Well, how do you know they're angry? Well, we just do. <laughs> yeah, in we this just do. in this, it's legitimately like I think it's in the opening crawl that it says the galaxy is ready to fight against the first order. The mm-hmm. First Order has done that first thing that dictators do when they're about to be ousted and cut off all communication right. between planets. Right. So one big part of the story is they're going to light the beacon um, and, you know, to get, you know, rally people that way. Uh, I think um, Ray and um, Poe and BB-8, yada, yada, their other characters, they're going to try and reset and restart communications between uh, the galaxy, between planets, so that, again, people can – rise up and overthrow the first order right a a fucking plot that makes i'm like oh my god it makes sense it does it It totally does yeah when compared to you know what we did end up getting it it makes total sense yeah so you get much more screen time for that character which i'm you know what if she's done well fine great i (laughs) that sounds awesome uh, another thing that's severely missing from Finn's story, Finn basically doesn't really have a story throughout the movies. Like, he does in the first movie a little bit. He's a stormtrooper who's, you know, 
dealing with not being a stormtrooper anymore and then pulls it gets pulled into this whole thing yeah. is fighting stormtroopers but it never he never feels bad about shooting another stormtrooper right in this movie when they're going through and taking this star destroyer and doing these other things at some point he sees a stormtrooper without his helmet that i'm guessing they probably killed in a firefight or something or, or the guy's dying right and realizes right. he knows the guy oh yeah that, from, that that's gonna be rough yeah yeah so then he's dealing with, well, am I doing the right thing? I'm killing, you know, they don't really have a choice. And at some point they find stormtroopers who have decided to, like, I, I think I mentioned it before, maybe not to you, but um, someone talked about story beats that would have been amazing if those stormtroopers at the end of um, Rise of Skywalker had gone, oh, no, we heard about you. That's mm -hmm. why we decided to turn. That's why we decided to put our weapons down and not slaughter these civilians. Right. That happens in this. There are oh. stormtroopers who start to rebel and start questioning their orders. And he goes and basically says, hey, I did it. And they're like, wait, you you turned. You know, that's why we want to turn. And he rallies them and basically creates a um, an army of former stormtroopers to fight the first order. That sounds really good. Cool. Fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like an actual good story. I and like yeah, I want that Star Wars now. Like, I want that I want that I mean, give it put it in my face. Give it to me. It's pain it's it's legitimately painful. Like I would I want somebody to film this whole fucking thing as like an indie Star Wars project type thing because there's so much stuff like Ray's story is better. He's going and he's um again, he's take he's taken over and he's trying to control power in the galaxy. Um so he's looking for other ways to do this and he goes to Mustafar or, or whatever the planet was at the that's in Rise of Skywalker mm. to find the Sith tem temple and he goes and he finds a holocron opens it up and it's basically a last will and testament of um, Emperor Palpatine and what it is is, is Palpatine's telling it, it's a ne note from Palpatine to Vader um, where he essentially tells him uh, uh, apparently Luke got the best of us and killed me. If you're still alive and you're uh, listening to this, you need to go to, I don't know, some other planet and you need to go find my master. And the description of this ancient Sith thing is that it's vaguely humanoid, but um, Lovecraftian. Mm. Uh, and it's look is like completely Lovecraftian. And I, that just sounds fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, why um, didn't we get that? I, I a Lovecraftian, know. like ancient Sith being that Kylo Ren goes and trains under. It's just, uh, uh, I mean, that does sound really, really fucking cool. Like I, I am, uh, like, I'm sitting here now and I'm legitimately upset <laughs> at like the things we aren't getting that sound just so, so good. Like, yeah, it, it, it is legitimately upsetting. Like, I am completely 100% down for that. Oh, I guess I got booted for some reason. Oh, probably for sitting there. I probably will, too. Because <laughs> I, I had to pull up and I was going down this and looking at it. Um, there's stuff where, like I said, Ray's parentage um, isn't... She's not fucking the... Em were pretty much nobodies but they were also murdered by kylo ren mm. which is a little bit more interesting than just not being anybody important and at the same time um you know she doesn't have to be related to the fucking emperor yeah no uh, i mean that's that's I, that's dumb i i didn't like that i thought that was dumb yeah they were people con connected to leia so, I mean, there's that there's this kind of gives more of a of a view as to why, like when she meets Leia, Leia is looking at her and treating her like I, I you know, I, I know you type thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, know. I don't know. I found this really interesting. It's one of those things where I especially with Star Wars and um, movie franchises that I'm in, interested in. Yeah, I like. I like reading these stories and it is a little bit schadenfreude of me 
where I like reading these stories because I can go, yep, and they didn't do this. They didn't have a plan because those fucking fuckers (laughs) (laughs) they are stupid. They are Uh, dumb. I mean, that's still one of the, like, that's still such a sore spot for me on episode eight. Like, just tell them you had a plan and you could have avoided so much bullshit and so many things happening, so many people dying. It's like... Hey, you know, it is completely, um, like, it's a mirror to the way this entire trilogy was done. There was no, they didn't write a continuing story arc. Yeah. They just said, here, go ahead and do three fucking movies on your own. Doesn't matter if you connect them or what. Just, you know, Star Wars here. Go away. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, <sighs> Ryan Johnson just I fucked wonder. a bunch of shit up, man. <laughs> yeah. Ryan jo- uh, Johnson fucked a bunch of shit up. J.J. Abrams can't conclude a uh, story to save his fucking life. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, so... They did, uh, Rise of Skywalker did finally hit a billion, um, oh, worldwide. That took a while though, But huh? 28 days, and it has legitimately, like, crawled to get there. Yeah. Uh, compared, obviously compared to the other Star Wars movies. Yeah, yeah. It's, hey, I mean, that's what happens. They didn't have a, a fucking, a plot, a plan. They just kind of went fuck it roll the dice get three people let them do whatever they want Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um i don't know i just saw a picture on reddit just a minute ago of george lucas i don't know if he's holding the baby yoda puppet or he's someone else is showing it to him or what but he's very close to it it almost looks like he's holding a baby and it's adorable and i loved it (laughs) it made me feel like there's still a chance for star wars Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yep. Uh, man. Yep. All right, guys. Um, I I think I think we're done. Yeah. I think that's all we have. I don't yeah. remember if we had anything else, and if we did, I guess it wasn't that important. No, probably not, because it's not something we need to think about. So I man. hope the Kansas man gets justice. <laughs> man, I hope he's. I so hope he gets laughed out of court, and that's that is just the cringiest stupidest fucking thing ever i just why dude why I, I think if he legitimately like presents that in court i mean unless he is one of those crazy people that actually went and found documented like laws on the books that never got taken off for yeah some like some obscure out, law from combat. like 1787 or something where you could <laughs> like legitimately like challenge <laughs> someone to a duel and the the terms and conditions in the law do not specify what weapons you use. It's like, oh my if God. he found something like that, great. But if he's just bringing this up, like I, I watched Game of Thrones and they said I could, like, I hope he got put in contempt of court. <laughs> just fucking lock him the fuck up. Yeah, no, he's a fucking. God damn he, he's a god. It's just why, dude? Why? <laughs> what is he shot his shot? <laughs> Like I don't, I don't hate him, but I hate him. <laughs> you know, like, A little, yeah. It 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 is. Ugh. All right, that that's it, guys. Um, yeah. We hope you enjoyed that. We hope you enjoyed me sucking at Destiny Two, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but well, we're gonna go ahead and wind it down there. Uh, if you guys, like I said, if you guys liked what we said, like what we had to hear, agree with anything, uh, disagree with anything, you know, give us a follow, give us a like, share, subscribe, comment. Mm-hmm. Give us ratings on various places, wherever you can rate us, do it. Tell us we suck. It's yep. fine. It's whatever. We can take it. Um, if you really enjoyed this, you want to help our cause, join our communities, you know, join our Discord, give us money on Patreon. Um, give enough, you get early access. Give enough, you get behind the scenes stuff. So, yeah, we, we release that all the time. Um, but that's it for us. For Young Godly Geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. See you. Fuck yeah.